this is an 8 day Friday. Uh, I know they rearranged it. I think that is correct. So if that's wrong, I'll have to let you know. Um, so that means there's class uh, Wednesday and Friday this week. However, I'm not here Wednesday. Uh, the state bowling tournament in Cabot is Wednesday. So I have to leave tomorrow with the bowling squad and go to Cabot and I'll be at Cabot all day and won't get home till like, I don't know, 10, 11, something Wednesday night. So we will not have class on Wednesday. I will send an email out just so you have a refreshed reminder on that, that there is no class Friday. I mean, Wednesday, there is class Friday. So if you're struggling, if you need any help with anything, if your grades below 70%, and then uh, Friday, we will be having class, just not on Wednesday this week. So uh, now that we got that out of the way, let's look at what we have this week. We're going we're gonna to continue on our theme of decisions because that's the program we've been writing. Uh, it's what we've been talking about with programming decisions. And so we're going to continue along that lines, adding to our knowledge in the programming world here. Let's see. Foundations of programming right here. All right. So we look at our grade screen. Oh, I did not get my program turned in. It's fake student. Fake student will get his program turned in. That was due. You should have the first three items turned in. See, it shows it's red. It's past due now. So you should have the welcome back program assignment, the decisions quiz, and the more decisions program turned in. We're going to look at the logic of and, or, and not. So right here, February 11th, and, or, not, uh, 4.03. Let's go to the activity screen. Here we go. This is very useful. We can use this in our programming to make them better because this is uh, something we need to check. All right, the logic of many options. Like rock, paper, scissors, right? If you choose rock, you beat scissors, but you lose to paper. You also tie with rock, but this all depends on what set of rules you're following. Or, you know, that's life with, or, well, that's decision making. Winning rock, paper, scissors depends on a few things. So what you play, what your opponent plays, what value you put on those elements. Some could argue that rocks can shred a piece of paper, right? What do you mean paper beats rock? I just go, therefore beating everyone. But what if you introduce lava? You'll see, then lava would be, but uh, yeah. when writing the program, you get to decide what logic you want to follow. So trust us, you'll lava it. Oh, they're making a funny. You'll lava it. All right. After completing this lesson, we'll be able to identify and use compound logic in Boolean expressions and create and evaluate Boolean expressions for making multiple decisions. So far, we just have the if, if else, or elif. You know, we, we can choose between two things. If this, True or false? We're going to change that today. And or not. So let's take a closer look at Boolean logic. And there's about to be a uh, class participation portion coming up with the chat. So have your chat ready here in a minute. There are three logical operators that can be used to write compound conditions. And or not. Let's look at the definition of compound conditions. Compares two or more Boolean conditions using logical operators. Search engines respond to Boolean logic. That's what, when you search for stuff, you're using Boolean logic. It makes it easy to tell Google or YouTube that you want to watch videos that contain cats and sloths, but not goats. Or perhaps you want information on Sasquatch or Bigfoot, but not Yeti. So, Boolean logic is used in search engines. So, you may have used Boolean logic without really knowing how to name it. So then you get images for that, all this good stuff. All right. In Boolean logic, the keywords and, or, and not make a major difference on whether something's true or false. So let's look at each one individually. And that's our first we're looking at. Both conditions on either side of the word and must be true for the overall condition to be true. Like if you want a pizza with pepperoni and black olives, this would be the only pizza that would be satisfying that condition to make it a true. There's a pizza with pepperoni and black olives. But if you had or, one condition of either side of the word or must be true. Like if you want pizza with pepperoni or black olives, then there's three types of pizza that would satisfy that condition. Pizza with olives, pizza with pepperoni, or pizza with pepperoni and olives 
does make that true. See, I'll take pepperoni or black olives. Well, here, this has both. Okay, that, that's still, that satisfies the Boolean condition. Then we have not. The condition appearing after the word not must be false. It's not an option. If it says not something, then it has to be false for that to be true. So pizza with pepperonis, but not black olives. So it has to have pepperoni and it has to not contain any black olives. So then you would have this pizza, right? Anything with black olives would be out the window. So when you combine two Boolean conditions to a compound condition, each individual condition is evaluated to be true or false. Like this has, you know, pizza with pepperoni, that has to be true, and not black olives, that has to be true. So this comes in handy when you write code that includes multiple decisions. So your program knows, do I do this code underneath there or not? So let's see if you got a handle on Boolean conditions. Here's where we're going to use the chat right here. Select the correct options as they relate to the statements with logical operators. All right, let me see if I can make this just a little bigger just to make sure you can see okay. All right, there we go. That's just a little bigger. All right, we want a number. There we go. A number that is both even and greater than 26, but not greater than 75. Which of these selections, and there could be more than one, there could be more than one, meets this condition. A number that is both even and greater than 26, but not greater than 75. Okay, I'm seeing several people choosing 30. Is that the only one that meets the condition? Oh, Rebecca chose 74 instead. Now, Locke chose both of them. 30 and 74. So even, with even, we can rule out 27. That's it. But all the other numbers are even. So 27 gets eliminated because it doesn't meet the first condition. Greater than 26, but not greater than 75. 30 is definitely between 26 and 75, and it's even. 27 is not even. 74 is greater than 26, but it's not greater than 75. 18 fails the second condition. 94 fails the last condition. 26 is not greater than 26, so it fails the second condition. Should be two correct answers for that. Two things that make all three of those things true. Let's submit. All right. Good job. They have more. Let's go to the next one. Pizza with mushrooms or black olives. Which of those? And we'll just call this one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to type all that out. Condition number one, pizza with black olives. Two, pizza with mushrooms and black olives. Three, pizza with black olives and pepperoni. Four and five. Which, which of those? One, two, three, four, five. Which of those meets the conditions that has pizza with mushrooms or black olives? Let's see. I'm seeing one in every answer. Everyone agrees with one. Everyone's saying four also. We got some people saying two. And I have one person say three. Two's in most all the answers. Let's say mushrooms and black holes. So the question is, this number three, because I've seen number three mentioned once, does it meet the conditions? Pizza with mushrooms or black olives. Now, there's no not added in there. It doesn't say not pepperoni. So I would suspect if you want mushrooms or black olives, that has mushrooms or black olives. It has pepperoni also, but we did not specify anything in there that it can't. We didn't say and not pepperoni. So let's see. It should be one through four. Because all of those pizzas either have mushrooms or black olives or both. Let's see what they say. Excellent. See, don't let that pepperoni fool you. 
we didn't say anything about pepperoni, so that's fine. You could have pepperoni or not have pepperoni, and that would not affect our Boolean statement. Good one. Yeah, the only one is the last one. The last one is pe pizza with pepperoni, but it doesn't have either one of those. So that's what threw that off. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, and this is one through seven this time. A word that begins with the letter B or U and ends in I-N-G or E-D. All right, a word that begins with the letter B or U and ends in I-N-G or E-D. Well, we should be able to throw out the second one, demoted, because it doesn't start with a B or a U. That was the first condition. The first condition was that start with a B or a U. And demoted is not. I see uh, bounced and boarding being list, listed. Are there any others? Nobody's listing anything else. Well, let's check them. Understood. Understood begins with a U, but does not end in either one of these. No ing, no ed. Demoted does not begin with B or U. Unicorn begins with a U, but again, doesn't meet that condition. Surprisingly, does not begin with B or U. Unlikely begins with U, but again, does not end in ING or ED. So, very good. There's only two, boarding and bounced. So, you would need to know that your computer would be true for both of those. Excellent. All right. Should have another one. Yep. We got two more. All right. A character that is a superhero and part of the Avengers, but is not able to fly. Okay. You got to have a little movie knowledge here or comic book knowledge, which is correct. Wonder Woman, Captain America, Hulk, Spider-Man, Batman, Iron Man, Black Widow. Has to be a superhero and part of the Avengers, but is not able to fly. How many? So someone shows Hulk and Spider-Man. See, this will be an interesting discussion here just when we see what their answer says. You know, can Spider-Man fly or is he just swinging? Is that considered flying? Can Hulk fly or does he just jump a long ways? Hmm. Can Captain America fly? Can a Black Widow fly? Or they just can jump a lot. Iron Man, he's a superhero and he is part of the Avengers. There you go, Serenity. Iron Man. But... So let's select these others you said. We, you said Hulk, you said Spider-Man, you said Black Widow, and somebody said Captain America. Okay, now, this definitely meets the first two criteria. These are all superheroes, and those five are part of the Avengers. The question is, how many meet not able to fly? No, I'm sorry. Iron Man can fly, so I definitely would not choose him. I'm sorry. I had that reversed. I, did, I missed the knot. Iron Man definitely can fly. So can any of these fly, or they just can jump a long ways? Let's see. So if we say none of these four can fly, let's submit it and see. Oh, good job. Yeah, Iron Man's the only one that we know definitely can fly. The others can just jump a long ways or swing, but doesn't really fly. Captain America doesn't fly. Black Widow didn't fly. Good job. So, yeah, don't forget the not able to fly. And Wonder Woman can't fly, but she's not part of the Avengers. Batman can't fly. Well, you know, he's got a cool jet that he can fly in, but he's not part of the Avengers. So, good job. Here's our last choice. Oh, there's only four. So the last one was a fake. It was just a tells you your score, five out of five. All right, let's look at Python and how we're going to use this right here. So in Python, we've worked with relational operators to compare two values, like if homework equals done, print, play video games. Okay, your homework's done, you can go play video games. But if we had two or more conditions that had to be true, this would be a compound condition. 
if homework equal done and chores equal complete, play video games. But you can't play video games when your homework's done until your chores are also complete. So there's two conditions we checked for there. So in this situation, Python would take no action unless both conditions were It would not print anything. It would just skip that print statement and go on unless both of these things were true. We could also use or and not. So if homework equal done or chores are complete, you can have a video game break. Play video games. Mom says, all right, either get all your chores done or get your homework done before you play video games, and then you can play for an hour, and then you got to do the other one. Right? So this checks to see if one or the other is complete. So you can play video games. So you're allowed to play if either of these is true. You don't have to have both done before you're allowed a video game break. Now let's look at this last one. If homework equals done and not, and look, they put this in parentheses, chores equal complete. So the only thing that would make all this true is if your homework's done, but your chores are not, because this is not complete. So the chores are not complete. Print, thank you for doing your homework. Please finish your chores. Didn't say you can play video games. This is checking to see, did you only do your homework and now you're asking to play video games and you haven't done your chores? Yes, that's true. Uh, thank you for doing your homework. Go do your chores. So yeah, in this case, your homework's done, but chores are not. So no video games just yet. Let's practice looking in Python here. All right. So let's follow the instructions on each slide. See what we got. Hashtag logical operators. Define main. Here's our main program. All right, let's scroll down so we can see all this. First thing we do is we set the variable A equal to 50. So we've, we've defined a variable, we've named it A, and we've given it a value of 50. So now we have some print statements. First thing it's going to do is print this, facts about A. Okay, there's no loop. That's the next line of code. It's going to do that. Now we have three if statements. If A is greater than 10 and there's that and A is less than 75, then we will print this statement. A is between 10 and 75 because that's what we checked for. If that is not true, it will go around that if statement and say if A is less than 10 or a is greater than 75, then we'll print a statement that says A is less than 10 or greater than 75. Or else we'll skip that print statement if that's not true. We'll say if A is equal to 10. Oh, not. There's a not out front. Not. If not A equals to 10, print A is not equal to 10. And that's the end of the program. So let's run it. Now we, we just set A equal to 50. So we know which of these should be true. Run program. Facts about A. A is between 10 and 75. Yes, 50 is definitely between 10 and 75. And 50 is not equal to 10. That's definitely true. All right, so let's, let's play with A real quick. Let's do something different. Let's actually set A to equal to 10. It's equal to 10 now. This says is if A is greater than 10. Will that print? I would expect not, right? Because 10 is not greater than 10. How about this one? A is less than 10. Is 10 less than 10? You no, know, 10 is quite equal to 10. Every time I've checked, 10 does equal 10. It's not less. If A is not 10, well, A is 10. This shouldn't print any of those three statements because none of those are true. Let's see. Run program. Facts about A. Nothing. Nothing. Because we set it equal to 10. So this was not true. This was not true. And this was not true. This, this was false. If A not A equals 10, well, A is equal to 10. So that's a false statement. And let's see, if we set it to 100, now this should not print because 
it fails this condition. It says A is less than 75. No, A is not less than 75. This one's an or statement, so either one has to be true. A is less than 10. Well, that one's false, but this one's true. A is greater than 75. So that, since that's an or, only one or the other has to be true. This was an and, so they both had to be true. So that was true, but this was not. And A not, A equals to 10. Well, A is not equal to 10. So it should print the last two statements. There you go. A less than 10 or greater than 75. Well, it turns out the greater 75 was the part that was true. And it's not equal to 10. All right, let's look at their second set of examples. Define main. Oh, this has an input statement. Answer is our variable, and we're assigning it whatever the user inputs. Input. Which frozen treat do you like? A, ice cream, or B, popsicles? Okay, so this is going to be an input statement that pops up on our screen. Then it's going to check. Ah, now see, this is, this is a good use of the if statement. If answer equals A or answer equals A, because we know they're supposed to enter A or B, but if they don't enter a capital A, we didn't. We may not get their choice right, so we need to check. Well, they might enter a small case A, or they might enter the capital letter A. So either way, we know what they mean. They're choosing ice cream either way. So we're using our if statement to verify both. It's either A or A. So then print this little, look, they put it all in quotes, so it'll print out. We'll look at that. It looks like an ice cream. It says yummy. LF, so this means else than if so it won't even look at this if this is true because they'll do the if and then it's like i don't need to check else because this was true and it'll totally skip this part and in the program but if that's not true if it's not a or a then it will check to see if it's b or capital b and if it is it'll print this so let's run this and take a look at the little graphics when they print out run program all right we're going to say just a lowercase a we just hit a not a capital a just lowercase a boom oh look it printed out a little ice cream cone and said yummy so they're having some fun with it hey when you write a program have some fun with it right have some fun with it. love it so that prints out and this little description little picture of an ice cream made with just keyboard characters all right, let's run again, and let's put capital A. No, let's put, let's put capital B this time, just so it changes our output. Capital B. Oh, look at that. That's a pretty good popsicle using these slashes. There's a popsicle. Mm, good. Let's run it together and put a capital A. Capital A. Oh, now we're back to the ice cream. Let's run it and put a capital C. Nothing, nothing happens if we put a capital C. Because it only checks to see if this is true or this is true. And there's nothing else the program does. If neither one of those are true, it just skips all that. What if we put run program and I typed ice cream? Nothing happens. Because it doesn't check to see if I typed ice cream. I have to hit an A to get the little ice cream. All right, so there is a good example of using an if, an L if statement. Else if this. And there's an or. All right, let's look at their last example. Logical operators, define main. Level equals 22. Okay, so we have a variable named level that we're assigning the value of 22. We have another variable called hidden character. And we're saying yes, we're assigning yes, literally yes, to that variable called hidden character. And we're setting a message just as an empty message. So right now it would print no message. If we tell it to print message, there's no message. That's just an empty space. So it's just an empty variable. All right, now what is it checking for? All right, if level is greater than or equal to level 25, and hidden character equals yes. So this is obviously in some kind of game, right? Then change the message 
to where right now the message is empty. Change it to congratulations. You unlock the Sherlock achievement. So if you get to level 25 or greater and hidden characters, yes, which we have right now, put hidden character, yes, you unlock the shirt. But if that's not true, L F L S F. So else, if that's not true, check this. Level is greater than or equal to 25 and not. Now look, they did not hidden characters. So if the hidden character is not set to yes, but you're at level 25, you missed your chance to earn the Sherlock achievement. So you have to unlock the hidden character before you get to level 25. So the message changes. Message, you missed your chance. Then the last thing it checks, well, no, there's two more actually. So another L if. So else, if that's not true and that's not true, check to see if this is true. The level is less than 25 and the hidden character equals yes. Message, you will earn your next achievement when level 25 is complete. So it's just letting you know you're on the right path. You've unlocked the hidden character, but you're not at level 25. So it doesn't tell you the you've unlocked it yet. And then the last thing is just an else. Okay, if that's true, no. If that's true, no. If that's true, no. If none of those are true, else set the message to keep looking for the hidden character. Then it goes down here. It says print your level is, and it prints whatever level was, and then prints the message. If none of those things were true, it would just print a blank message because there's no message. But since there's an else statement, we will set the message equal to something. Either this, 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 or if none of those are true, we'll set it look at this. So let's run. Let's see. We're level 22 with the hidden character. So let's run the program. Your level is 22. You will earn your next achievement when level 25 is complete. So it checked. This was not true because it's an and, and our level is not greater than or equal to 25. So we failed right there. So it did not change the message to this. On this one, this is not true because, again, our level is not high enough. So it did not set the message to this. When it got to this statement, yes, our level is less than 25, and yes, hidden character equals yes. So this is what it changed the message to. So when we got down here where it actually printed the message, now it printed this because that's what it we set the message to. So that's another way to do a print statement where you have multiple things you might might want to print. You can just set those equal to a variable in your if statements, in your in your if else. Print the message. So let's go up and change something. Let's say we make it to level 25 now. Level 25, hidden characters, yes. Message is originally zero, nothing, empty, but we'll see what it changes to. Run program. Your level's 25. Congratulations, you unlocked the Sherlock achievement. So we printed that first one, and then we skipped everything else. We didn't set the message equal to anything else because we got that. If we go up here and we say hidden characters, no. We didn't unlock the hidden character. Run the program. Your level's 25. You missed your chance to earn the Sherlock achievement because we made the level 25 without unlocking the hidden character. All right, so next week when you're writing a program, because we write one like every other week, this is a good place to go back and look and see how do these and and not and all that work. Here's some good examples. Put it in an elif loop here. I mean, not a loop, but I mean, if, else this, else this, or just else. There's no nothing else to check. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. This will just say, read the lesson. Practice, like we were just practicing with that examples, and then do the quiz. All right, let's look at the quiz real quick. The three logical operators used to write compound conditions are and, or, and negative. True or false? Read the following statement. Here's an if statement with an and in it. Which values of X would make this true? It gives you choices. That's what we were doing on that other page. Uh, in a compound condition, one condition on either side of the logical operator or must be true for the overall is true, true or false. Uh, why would a programmer use or? Oh, that's a good question. Why would you use or? Now, remember, your questions you get may be a little different than this because there's a bank of questions pulled out, but it'll be something similar to this. And which of the following evaluates to true 
if you pick a ham and cheese sandwich. So look at these ands and ors and nots and all that good stuff and figure out what is true. So there you go. There is the assignment for the week. The 4.03 quiz right there at the end. So if you want to go back and play with that program on the next to last page, page three there, change some things, change some of the ifs and ands if you want. If you want to change some of the things in the end statement just so you can practice with it, that's why it's there. That's why it's there. So you can go in and go into an actual program that's already written and just change the values and change the if and statements and if ors and all that just so you understand how to do things with it. Good practice. All right, guys. Remember, I am not here Wednesday because of the bowling state tournament, but I will be back for Friday, and Friday is an A day. So we will see you on Friday if you need to be here or if you just want some help with anything. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Have a great week, guys. <laughs>